Hey everyone, got a project for you today, back in the shop. So a while back I made a DIY version of uh, monkey bars, and that was a kind of suspension fitness device, they're actually, they're right there. I made them out of like nylon webbing and cam buckles and PVC pipe, and they were really just like a, a knockoff version of this product that uh, Monkey Bars put out, they're called the Monkey Bars 2. So I made a video about how I built those, and I'll link that like right there. And a while after I put that video out, the guys at Monkey Bars actually contacted me and said, hey, can we put this on our site? The whole idea is that they're really just wanting people to use their kind of product. They want people to move, they want people to have a portable gym that they can take with them anywhere they go. They can be outside, they can be in hotel rooms. It's more about the message than the money for them. And I really respect that. So they just came out with a new product. They had the original Monkey Bars. They had the Monkey Bars 2, which is what these are. And they have this new one called the Pocket Monkey, which is a much more portable version. They took away basically all of the unnecessary stuff and made this, this they made it like a really streamlined, efficient version uh, that has all the best qualities of each iteration of their product. I think they got it like 40% smaller, down to like less than a pound in this really great uh, compact carrying system. So I think they just finished up a Kickstarter and they're, they're still doing pre-orders for that thing now. So they explain their own product best, so take a look. Pocket Monkey is the world's most portable fitness device. You can do the same exercises from the gym, except now you can do them anywhere. It's tiny and weighs less than a pound, so it's easy to bring with you. You can use it at home, the hotel, or even outside. Our patented design sets up in seconds. On any door, anywhere in the world. It may be small, but it's incredibly strong. So that thing looks pretty cool, right? They actually reached out to me this time and said, hey, can you make us another DIY version? I was really excited when they reached out to me because I'm really glad that they're keeping that aspect of their business going, or of their mentality going. I'm happy to help. So today I'm going to be making a DIY version of their unreleased pocket monkey. I'm gonna try to make this thing as close to the real product as possible. I basically went to the hardware store and grabbed what I could. So the first thing I'm gonna need to get is cam buckle tie downs. I got a couple because I am gonna need more webbing than just one 10 foot strand. You're gonna need some PVC pipe. I went with three quarter inch pipe. You're gonna need some strong sewing thread. I actually had some Kevlar line for tying kites, but I got it for other projects. So I like to use some Gorilla Tape to put some grip onto the PVC handles. And I'm gonna have some cushion tape or foam tape uh, that's gonna go on a doorstop that I'm gonna show you later. This is gonna be optional, but this is actually heat shrink tubing. It's a one inch diameter, which is the same diameter as the webbing. So this is gonna be used to protect your sewing, the stitch joints optional but recommended to make it look nicer and protect everything. You're going to need a lighter or some kind of a flame source. You're going to need a good pair of scissors to cut your webbing and a sewing thread or like a sail needle or something that can sew webbing. I actually have one of these. This is called an easy stitch. It's used for sewing leather or webbing or uh, fixing like canvas and stuff. If you got one of these, awesome. I'm gonna be using it. I've never used it before, so we'll see how that goes. Otherwise, a big needle will do just fine. That's what you need, not much stuff. I think I spent a total of like 25 bucks on all that, and I got too much material. So you can actually make two or three of these things for all of what I got. Here's the plan. So I did some research, uh, some investigation of their design on their website and on uh, other reviewing videos of the Pocket Monkeys. I hope I came up with like a very close replica as much as I could. So here's what I came up with. Starting off at the very top, this is going to be a doorstop. So this is going to be some PVC pipe wrapped up in the foam tape. Uh, to protect the door, but basically this is going to go on the other side of your door and it's going to be kind of a, a lock onto that door frame. 
Uh, you've got webbing here that's sewn onto your cam buckle. Then you have your cam buckle itself. Then you have a single strand of webbing with a loop sewn on the bottom of it. This is gonna be about four feet. And then through that loop, you're gonna have one long continuous strand of about 10 feet of webbing. And that's gonna go through your handles and then sewn up here on the ends of the handles. This is actually what they call the lower triangle for their handles. Uh, so we're gonna have our handles cut to about four and a half inches. We're gonna secure our sewing points with some heat shrink. And that's really it. It's a very simple design. We really have one, two, three cuts to make. We have about five sewing bits to do and we gotta integrate the cam buckle. And that's really it. Anyways, that's the plan. Let's go ahead and get to work. Got my straps all unpackaged here. I got my cam buckle. Uh, I just need the buckle part. I can just get rid of this. Two 10 foot straps. Cut it right past the end and just cut that hook off. When you cut these, they wanna fray right away. So make sure that you just burn the ends. That'll just ensure that they're not gonna fray on you. This is gonna need to be about four feet long. We've got our four foot section. This is gonna be what you adjust off the cam buckle. I want a section that the door stop is gonna go to and it's also gonna hook onto the other end of the cam buckle. About right there. But we need to cut our handle and door, or handles and door stop out. I went with four and a half inches. So when I close my hand, it's about four and a half inches wide. I have this little hacksaw tool, so I'm just gonna. So you need three of those. So I turn one into three, and uh, you're gonna need to clean up the inside corners. So let me grab a utility knife. So all you do here is you just uh, run your blade along the inside corner, trying to make it as smooth as possible in there. Those edges are just nice and smooth in there now. Just round off the inside corners. These will be the handles. This will be the door stop. So I'm going to wrap these guys in black tape. So that's just going to give them a nice frictiony finish so that you're not slipping around on the PVC. Makes it look a little bit nicer too. Okay, so we're going to wrap this handle, or sorry, this door stop up in foam tape. That's gonna give it some kind of cushion on the door and it also provides some friction so it's not sliding around on the door frame. Then I'm gonna finish this up in black tape also. Okay, there's the door stop. Looks a bit on the weird side, but that's gonna give some good uh, bite onto the door frame and protect the door itself. So we've got our two handles and we've got our door stop. Next up, we need to do some sewing. So we're gonna sew one end of the webbing through the handle back onto itself to make one lower triangle. The other end through the handle, lower triangle. Make sure we have heat shrink and the handles on the webbing before we close it up so that we can get these on. So if you do happen to have an easy stitch, it's gonna make things a lot easier because you can just run the needle through, through the body of it, up through the needle, thread the needle, Make sure you have enough string out so that you can do the whole area that you're gonna sew. So we're gonna cut our heat shrink into three equal pieces because I'm gonna cover three of the sewing parts that I do. So on your long 10 foot piece, you're gonna put two pieces of heat shrink and two handles. So here's how the lower triangle works. You're just gonna have that bit sewed right about there. Your handle's gonna be here, and then heat shrink is gonna slide over the sewed part right there. And you're gonna close that up, and that's gonna be it. And you wanna make sure that you have enough you know, room for your hand that's not gonna be in your way. And keep in mind that this is also your foot strap now. So, you can want to be able to have enough room to move your handle out of the way and slide your foot in there. So here's how the sewing is going to work. You've got your handle through your webbing. You're going to make your lower triangle. 
and you're gonna sew this end onto that. Take your stitcher, and if you're familiar with sewing, you're just gonna make a box X pattern, so it's gonna be a square with an X through it, and that's gonna be a really secure stitch. If you're using a easy stitch or a sewing all, whatever this is called, you're gonna start by running it all the way through. And then getting your thread at least one time through. And then you're just gonna start stitching. Stitch in. Run the end of your line through your loop. It's gonna lock it in place. Pull it back through. Pull it tight. And then keep going just like that. So there is the box X stitch. This is solid, that's, that's not gonna go anywhere, okay? So to finish this stitch off, you just need to get out a bunch of slack here. And then run it through one last time. And then you wanna pull all that slack through. And you're gonna cut this off a little bit above your needle. And pull your needle out. That's ready for the next sew. And you've got these two ends. You can just tie those off. I like to use a square knot. There. And cut the tag ends off. Now you can't burn the ends if you use Kevlar because Kevlar is fireproof. I like to use a dab of super glue on either end just to make sure that it won't fray. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide your heat shrink tubing over that sew joint, and you're just gonna shrink it. So there you have it, you have one lower third triangle done. On to the next one. So just like the last one, you're gonna take your end, and you're gonna make your lower third triangle. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this and put the heat shrink on, and I'll be back in a second. All right, there we have it. Got the handles, we got the sewing bits done. Just got one nice long piece of webbing. I think this looks pretty good. So next, we have to take our four foot length and just make a loop so that basically we're just gonna let that strap run through just like that. Last little bit of heat shrink tubing on there. So we're gonna slide that in. Make our loop, stitch that up, shrink it down, okay? And done. Just like that. Got our box X stitch done. Got a little loop made. Now this end actually feeds through the cam buckle. Make sure you feed it so that when it pulls, the tension activates or engages that cam and the teeth grab it. So on this one, it has to come down like that. So that it pulls down, the teeth activate. And then to adjust it, you just Move up and down like that, very easy. Okay, so the last thing to do is gonna to be to set up the doorstop anchor point. So we're gonna take our shorter piece of webbing that we cut and we're just gonna run our doorstop over it. And then this is also gonna hook onto the anchor part of the cam buckle. So all we're gonna do is just run that through and then lay them over top of each other and make another box X stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Here's how it turned out. I made the stitch pattern a little bit skinnier just so that it could fit up inside the doorstop. So you can kind of just like squeeze it in there. 
that way you don't have to see it. So now you've got your door stop hooked up to your cam buckle. This is going to be your anchor. And then everything else hooks up to the cam buckle and is adjustable from there. A lot of sewing. It's all done though. So let's get it all put together and I'll show you guys the final product, all right? So you've got your door stop adjustable strap comes up through here, through the cam buckle. The loop on the end of that adjustable piece hooks on to your handles, just like that. So the design of this thing is a lot simpler. Uh, much less hardware that you're going to have to go out and get. Um, things that are going to be clanging around that take up space. This thing can pack up really small and it's not going to get all tangled up either because this is one strap, this is one strap. The one thing that's missing here is the case. Pocket Monkey was designed to be much more compact and much more friendly for travel. So when I think of travel, I think of, you know, luggage. And I found this little uh, toiletry or dop kit. I think you can just take your whole gym and stuff it right in there like that. Zip it up, good to go. You even have room in here. Just pull it out, set up your bars, and get to work. It's that simple. Let's go test it. So whether you're traveling or whether you're at home or you just want a quick workout, something you can fit literally in your pocket, try this out. Functionally, it's the exact same. You can do the same movements. You can use the Monkey app that they have created. Um, <laughs> that's pretty great. Monkey Dan, wild dude. He, uh, he shows you how to do everything. Really great interface there and really easy to follow workouts. So go give that a try. Whether you make one of your own, whether you go out and you buy the Pocket Monkey, I think the idea behind this whole thing is to get out there, move your body, be wild as they say. The thing I really love about the suspension trainer, why I have these, why I've kept these, and why I made this, is because it's not just a regular old gym setup. It's like a creative movement or creative way to work out. You know, I think that they're just fun. So try this project out, let me know how it goes, or go out and get yourself a set of the Pocket Monkey. Uh, you won't be disappointed either way. Uh, this is the Jake of All Trades channel. It's all about getting creative, okay? It's fixing things, or cooking, or making, or breaking, or just trying new stuff and learning new skills. And I guess I'm gonna start incorporating some fitness into all that. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Okay, thank you, bye.